All right, so you're telling me the Nothing Phone 2A runs with the Pixel 7a in terms of performance, runs cool, and starts at 330 euros? I mean, yeah, I get it. There's some issues on paper. It's using a MediaTek chipset, which in the past has basically meant a <coughs> bunch <it. coughs> But this is looking like a very complete package this time around. Oh, I like that it's not super heavy. Dude, I was looking for a phone to take with me on my trip because I need one for my kids to borrow for the plane. I picked up one of the most recent iPhones. It'd been a little while. I was like, damn, these things are heavy. Packaging wise, you get a whole lot of not much. It's not nothing, but it isn't much. You've got a SIM removal tool. Apparently the cable is supposed to go here, but ours didn't have one in the box. Maybe that's because it's an early unit. And you get a phone. There is a lot to like here. Obviously nothing's design language is back in partial force. You're not gonna get any of the fancy lights on the back, but personally, I love the transparent back. And I also love that this is one of the first phones I've seen in a little while that doesn't have a gigantic camera bump on it. We've got two 50 megapixel cameras back here, one regular, one ultra wide, both with Samsung sensors. And that's not the only thing that they've done to help shave down costs. I already mentioned they've gone with a MediaTek chipset. So it's the Dimensity 7200. But while MediaTek doesn't have the same kind of brand recognition that Qualcomm might have, this is not exactly your grandpa's MediaTek chipset. It's using the latest TSMC four nanometer process. It's got eight cores paired with eight or 12 gigs of RAM with their RAM booster feature that essentially allows apps to run over from memory into storage and practice. Uh, we found that in a phone configured like this with a decent amount of memory, it didn't make a measurable difference in anything that we were looking at, but hey, maybe it's a cool idea for Apple. You gonna take that, Andy? Apple doesn't put enough RAM in their devices. He has no defense even. Uh, even the Apple fanboys can't defend it. There are more compromises. You won't find a coil here for wireless charging because there isn't any. And the USB-C port on the bottom is only USB 2, just like the non-pro versions of the latest iPhones, but it supports 45 watt wired charging and has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in it that in our testing performed admirably. We ended up with about 14 hours in our longevity test, which is playing back YouTube videos at 250 nits and a full charge was only 63 minutes. Pretty nice considering what value phones used to be like. And the same can be said of the display. Yeah, the Pixel 7 a outperforms it, hitting higher peak brightnesses in small windows. So you're gonna get a better HDR experience out of that phone, but the Nothing Phone 2a managed to hit about a thousand nits peak brightness full screen in SDR, so you'll be able to use it under any conditions. I realize I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, though I haven't talked about the design pretty much at all. We've got the lock button on the right, volume rocker on the left. I already showed you guys where the SIM location is. It's right next to that USB-C port, and that's about it. Noise canceling microphone here, and ah yes, the Glyph lighting interface does make a return, but in a much simplified form. So here, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, Gestures are enabled by default, so no bottom buttons, although you can reactivate them if you really want to. And then let's, uh, let's see, glyph lights on. Hey, there we go. And that's just a brightness slider. Okay, what the? Hello? Now it's on. Okay, what just happened? This is like, this must be like watching my grandparents use a computer. Okay, now they're on. Oh, they're gone. What, they're gone now? No, they're... Okay, there you go. That's cool. You gotta give them full points for style, you know? This is one of those devices you look at and go, man, why would I pay a huge premium for design when this exists? It is so cool. And sure, I might not be the arbiter of what is cool and what isn't, but do you really disagree? It looks freaking awesome. And I gotta say, as someone who doesn't really care that much about the skin on my phone, yeah, this makes less of a difference to me than it might to some people, but I can't deny that it looks really good. I also can't deny this message from our sponsor, Tello. Tello aims to be a super reliable mobile provider with prices that won't break your bank account. With Tello's unlimited plan, you get a host of features like free international calls to 60 plus countries, free hotspot and tethering, and unlimited 2G data after you've used up your 35 gigabytes of 4G LTE slash 5G, all for just $25 a month. 
And with Tello, there's no bulk buying, no advance or annual payment, and no binding contracts. So check them out below. <laughs> Get it? Below? Tello? And say Tello to your new personalized plan. As cool as it looks, I'm more interested in how it slides though. It's not LTPO OLED, okay? So you're not gonna get those one hertz variable refresh rate values and you're not gonna get that super high peak brightness, but you are still gonna get inky blacks. It still manages variable refresh rate down to 30 hertz, so you will get some power savings there. And as we saw already, it gets, in my opinion, bright enough, especially when you consider the price. Some might complain about the 1080 by 2412 resolution, but in my opinion, even at this size, it's not a problem unless you are extremely keen-eyed. The first thing that I tend to do with the device is turn the text size all the way down because I'm all about information density. So let's do that and have a look. I mean, come on, I get you wanna show off how well you can see, but even if I had a screen that ran at a higher resolution natively, I would probably still turn it down to 1080 just for the power savings and increase in battery life. It's got Corning Gorilla Glass 5. It's flat, so if you're one of those people who doesn't like curved glass, then you can suck on my Note 9 and you can buy this phone. Personally, I like the curved glass, but I also get it. The bezels are pretty reasonable, again, for a more value-oriented device. A big question mark for me, though, is the camera. First of all, can I double tap for camera? Yes, I can, thank you. Oh, interesting. Mm, it struggles a little more than some of the more premium phones compensating for the exposure issues that shooting into this light generally has. That's, in case you guys were wondering, why I'm always taking pictures in such suboptimal conditions on set. What I'm looking for is how much this light source blows out the rest of the image. And you can see the answer for this phone is a lot. I would expect, based on what I've seen so far, that under better conditions, it will fare quite a bit better. And the answer is, it does. That processing is pretty slow. That's one of the things that Qualcomm has done a really good job of over the last five years, is building neural processing and image processing capabilities into their chipsets that are just better than what you're gonna get on a budget chipset. With that said, this is not behaving like a budget chipset either with respect to this. Sure, the processing times are taking a while, but damn, that is like really good. Here, just for context, okay? Just for context. I know it's an older flagship, but this is what passed for a flagship phone like five years ago. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Look, the phone app will open eventually. Ooh. I take back all the nice things I just said. It just got crushed by a Note 9. Now, there's things people will like more about the Nothing image. It's poppier, but like, that is not what that looks like, okay? It's in shadow. <laughs> That's what it looks like. This light, the Note 9, blows it out. You can see it's clipped. But the Nothing phone just has no idea what's going on here. Like this looks like two lights side by side when it is not. That's a white wall with a little bit of spill on it, just like we're looking at here. <laughs> Ironically, the ultra wide handles that light source a lot better. If you're a shutter bud, this might not be the thing for you, but it'll definitely do in a pinch. Selfie camera though? 32 megapixels, and you know what, again, maybe I'm getting bamboozled here, but all of this is very usable. Like, very usable. Let's say, for example, instead of a blank space, you had friends. You could put them there. Not bad, and to their credit, they're not overdoing the processing on the selfie camera. I see this so much, even from big brands, where they have all these effects and everything turned on. It's like, no, that's what a tech bro who's pushing 40 looks like for better or for worse. Feel like I've aged 10 years in the last decade. For video, she'll do 4K 30 FPS, and the lab reported that the audio recording quality was actually surprisingly decent. So that's a pleasant surprise. What's up, y'all? Not bad at all. Really not bad. I mean, it's no iPhone, but it also caught, like what the fricks does the iPhone start at these days? Okay. Technically, the iPhone SE still exists for 429, but get real. So 13 starts at 600 bucks US. 13 starts at 600 dollars US. Yeah, I would take this over that in a heartbeat. It's got an aluminum frame. It's IP54 rated, which admittedly is 
not really par for the course anymore. It's as good as the Nothing Phone 2, but I would like to see that up to an IP67 rating. And I guess now's the time for us to explore Nothing OS a little bit. We ended up using this instead of the stock Android experience for our testing because, well, we liked it. It's more than just a theme on your desktop. There's kind of similar to uh, Carl Pay's previous <clears throat> employer, OnePlus, thoughtful customizations to the stockish Android experience. And we didn't find that it had a noticeable impact on performance or battery life, which is all we can really ask. Right there, right there. Back button on the right side. Is that so much to ask? See, thank you, nothing. Thanks for nothing. OS. And to everyone who can't be bothered to do that, thanks for nothing. I just, I like the back button on the right, okay? We've got to do a quick audio test. Does it have an amplified earpiece speaker? Oh, I guess we're about to find out. I wouldn't expect it at this price. I'll be impressed if it has it. It does. Not bad stereo imaging either. And that's something that has really improved in the last two, three years. My goodness, has it gotten a lot better across the industry. And not just phones, laptops too, just... We have these tiny little devices with these tiny little speakers sounding like they're coming from all around you. A little muddy, not the loudest thing I've ever heard. Very reasonable considering the price. You know, I didn't really think about it until I was sitting here using the phone some more, but the Glyph interface is kind of perfect for me. I have this problem and you'll have seen it actually here. The editor will have seen it. Throw, roll the clip of me getting interrupted by my phone notification. The Nothing Phone 2A. Shh. Look, I'm very popular, okay? I forget what I have my phone set to very, very often. And so I'll end up with it on when I'm supposed to be filming and then I'll end up leaving it muted when I'm supposed to be accessible to my family or my colleagues. And so if I could just use their flip to glyph, see the phone flashing out of the corner of my eye while I'm filming, but put it in my pocket and have the notifications go, that, that would be kind of awesome. Some of the functions of the Glyph interface are less applicable to me. You can use it as a countdown timer, for example. Why do you need to spend more than 350 bucks on a phone? Oh, speaking of $350, it's unfortunately not available in the US outside of their developer program where it costs $350. So it's not available, but it is. And the pricing is perfectly reasonable. So what does that even mean? I'm not even gonna speculate why that is, but it's $350 for a developer membership and you get a phone, sure, whatever that means. This is cool. They apparently have NTFS optimizations for moving files to and from Android and Windows. That matters to me a lot. I'm one of those dinosaurs that still offloads my photos from my phone with a cable. And man, is it ever slow. Mm, ringtone sound pack. Glyph Composer. If the idea is to be annoying and get my attention. <laughs> Wow, boy, would that ever be effective. Uh, uh, delete. Never exist again, thank you. <laughs> There's a few more labs notes on the phone. It's Wi-Fi 6, but speeds were... As expected for a device of this caliber, it uses Bluetooth 5.3 only, but at least Bluetooth connectivity was extremely stable. And so was the performance of the in-screen fingerprint sensor with it registering 28 out of 30 times across what is a mostly anecdotal test. Uh, they were also very pleased with call quality, which is something that, you know, it should be good for because it's a phone. Now, that leaves the last big question, and that is how long exactly will you be using this phone for? Nothing is promising three years of updates with four years of security updates, which is not on par with some of the really big players in the space anymore. But at this price, I consider to be extremely reasonable. Better than nothing, you might say. No, exactly the same as nothing. <laughs> Look, if they don't want people making these jokes, then they should call their company something not stupid. Something. Yeah, no, I don't mean stupid, I mean... Memeable. Subscribe to Short Circuit. See you later.